Now, before I start to render, I haven't added any lights. These are just the default lights in the scene, which really aren't what I want. So let's jump back out here and I'm going to hit save. And I'm going to go under my settings and make sure that my options, the def default light is on right now. So if I turn that off, if I render, everything's going to be black. So I'm going to add just a couple lights. I'm going to do a very quick light rig. So I'm going to add an area light here. And I'm going to move the area light out here. And I just want to kind of get it somewhere near the camera. And let's just take a quick render. I think that's going to be pretty hot from the looks of it. Let's just see. Oh, no, it's not. But it's actually a much... Look at the, the dramatic difference in the lighting look just by turning that default camera off. So let me take this, take this light here, and I'm going to... I'm going to resize it like this and I'm going to actually go into the details. Now this is, you can only do this with area lights. That's why I chose it. I'm going to use an area shadow map. Actually, I'm not going to do any shadowing right now. I'm not going to use any light shadows. I'm just going to get my shadows using ambient occlusion. I'm going to go to settings, effect, ambient occlusion. And what ambient occlusion does is it simulates soft shadows. So now when I render it, Okay, I get a simulated soft shadow here on the edges, but everything in the background is disappearing. Things have really changed dramatically, so I need to make a couple changes here. I'm going to take my light and I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. And now the thing about, I'm going to back up here, the thing about area lights when you size them up, and I'm going to rotate it a little bit, is one of the nice things about this, and you see this all the time in product animation, is that they're visible in reflections. So if you, if you specify it here, details, show in reflection, right down there, you turn that on, and let's just take a, take a picture of that there and see what we get. Okay, so now you can see that we're actually getting the light in the reflection. If I, and this is one of the reasons why I soften that up. If I go back to my cube for a second and I go to reflections and I take that blur off of that and I hit render again, you're going to see that light pretty hard there. You see it? There it is. There's that light. It's, it's acting with the bump and everything, but there you're seeing it. It's, and it's actually not that bad. I'm just going to put, put my blurriness to 5. I'm going to increase the size of my light a little bit here. But whenever you see them animating an iPhone and you get that nice reflection on the glass, this is how they do it. This is exact, it it's exactly how they do it. They just they, they put a, uh, an area light there, they make it square, they rotate it 45 degrees, and you get that nice shiny reflection on the glass. Okay. One more light here, maybe two. Okay, so light, this time it's just going to be a point light. I'm going to stick it behind here. I'm going to drop it down, and I'm going to give it a little bit of color. I'm actually going to give both lights a little bit of color. So, my light one, which is my kicker light, basically, I'm going to give that a little bit of a blue tint here, somewhere in there, and I'm going to say... It's only about 60%. And what's happening is you can sort of see it here in the display. If my display will come back, you can see that blue tint showing up there, right in the corners. And this one, I'm going to give it a little bit of a gold tint, just a little. Aha, see what happened. Everything starts to look kind of rich now. See, we're getting our blue reflections down, or our blue spill here, and we're getting our sort of golden light here. Now, I still think that this is a little bit distracting with all this 
with all this reflectivity here where you can really see the light. So I'm actually, I like it and I think it's going to add a lot to the scene. But what I'm going to do here is I am going to add some more of that blur back in there. I just think it's a little bit too much right now. So let's just bring that blurriness up to 20. Okay, it's going to make it really soft. I'm going to hit my light here and I'm going to make this light. Yeah, I'm going to make it, I'm going to pump it up a little bit. Let's just say it's 100. So now you see what happened? We get all that nice reflection back there. Now let's see. Do I need one more light? Do I need a kicker? Maybe I do. So this one is going to be the key light. And this one back here is going to be my rim light. And then I'm going to add, I'm going to duplicate that light and I'm going to bring it around here, around the front. And I want to drop it over here. And let's see, do I want it up high or low? I kind of want it to pick up right in the text. So let me see here. If I have it right in front of the text, that's really going to make that text pop. But what I want to do is I'm going to give this color a little bit of, let's see, really the way to do it is you give, you give something a little bit of red, you give something a little bit of green, and you give something a little bit of blue. And, and uh, you end up with a really rich looking image. So this blue, I'm going to back that blue off a little bit. And I'm going to make so we've got red, blue, and then our key light, which is really kind of yellowish, let's just push that a little bit more towards green, but bring it out a little bit, and let's take a look at our image. Okay, it's looking pretty nice. What I'm going to do, though, is, you know, this, this cap here, it's getting lost in this nice shiny cube color here. So what I'm going to do is this. Instead of using this silver cap color, which I'm not crazy about, I'm just going to use the color I made. I'm going to duplicate it here, and I'm going to call this text face. And I'm going to drag it on top of the other one to replace it. Okay, so now it's the same color as here, which would make it kind of get lost. So what I'm going to do with my text face is I'm going to change this color a little bit. Let's see here. So this color here is sort of a bluish color. Let's make it sort of a goldish color here. Uh-huh. That's probably a little bit too much. Aha. Uh -huh. Now we're getting something. I'm going to do a quick render here with my render region, just because I want to see a little bit of it, not the whole thing. Okay, it's good except for this area here where the light is really blowing out the color. So I'm going to move that light here, which I did not rename, and I need to. Kicker. Okay, and I'm going to just pull this. See what's happening there? You can really see it just reflecting right there. Okay. I'm just going to move this down a little bit, and... I'm going to decrease power of that one a little bit. And actually, you know what I'm going to do here? One more thing. I kind of like my key light to be a little bit pink instead, so I'm going to push that to the pink color in here. And I'm going to make my kicker be a little bit green instead of a little bit red. Let's see what we get there. Let's see if this looks sort of movie trailer-ish. Okay, with this color, the text still needed a little bit hotter than this. So let me see, basic, luminance, reflection, specular. Because it's just flat like this, the thing to remember about doing reflections, this is something that people always forget about working in uh, 3D, is basically when you just make something reflective but it's flat, if there's no bend to it, it's basically just a mirror. So, unless there's something for it to reflect against, it basically looks kind of white and it doesn't really have a lot, of, uh, a lot of interest to it. It's only when you start to bend things. You think about a car. Think about the chrome of a car. Remember when the cars had chrome? Um, the chrome of a car only looks cool because it's bent. If the chrome of a car was flat, it would just be a mirror. But because it's bent around a bumper or bent around the curve of the car or whatever it is, uh, that's where you're getting all those kind of nice distortions and reflections. So that's really what you're seeing, is you're seeing the bend. 
And since this type has no bend, you're not really getting much as far as that reflection goes. And I could probably drop the type into a, uh, into a deformer, but I'm not going to bother with that right now. I want this to still be pretty clean. What I will do here is just take a look at my, my width here, pop that out a little bit more. Right, okay. And I do have a little bit of a bump. I'm actually going to increase the bump just by, you see, we get a little bit of that sketching in there, and I'm just going to hit render here. All right, and some of this is kind of getting lost here a little bit, but I'm going to correct that in After Effects. One other thing I'm going to do before I render this out is with this text color, I'm just going to add a little bit of luminance. Now it's going to blow it out all the way. I don't want it quite that luminant, but I just want to add a little bit. So let's just try 20%. And let's just render a region so I just see if it's popping. Let's bring it up to 40% and do an interactive render region here. Okay, there we go. Now we're getting a little bit of something there. There we go. That's what I want. And once I bring this into After Effects, because I've set the object buffer, I can tweak that even more. Save my file. Now I'm going to go into my render settings. Now I'm going to go into my render settings and set up this render. I'm going to go render options, render settings. Now, there's a couple things I need to do here. I need to click on multi-pass. And when I turn multi-pass on, what that allows me to do is it allows me to add object buffers. And the object buffers work as alpha channels, basically. They're luminance mats for the different things you've specified. So, for example, object buffer 1 is going to be these background cubes. Object buffer 2 is going to be the text. Now, you need to specify object buffer 1, group ID is 1. Object buffer 2, they always default to 1, so you've got to make sure you set that to the right ID. I'm going to set my anti-aliasing to best. My options. I don't have, I'm going to leave pretty much everything the way it is. One thing I always do is I just turn refraction off. There is no transparency in here, so there's no refraction to consider, but it's just something I like to do. I turn that off. Okay, the ambient occlusion on is on. I'm going to go under my output settings. Okay, so this is going to output. Now, under my save settings, I'm going to save this as a QuickTime movie. So I'm going to save this file as Sneak peek. You can see I'm working in screen flow here. Sneak peek. I'm going to specify this as a QuickTime movie. I definitely do want an alpha channel here. And then for my multi-pass, I'm going to just specify the same thing there. So I'm going to say sneak peek. And it will give me an object buffer 1 and object buffer 2. And then finally, I want to specify I want to save out my compositing project. The target application is After Effects. Uh, relative and timeline markers I don't need. I definitely do want the 3D data. And I'm going to save the project file and I'm just going to again call this one Sneak Peek Wave. Okay. Now, finally, output. I want to make sure I'm outputting all frames. So from 0 to 300. I'm going to click Save and We'll pick this up once the render is done. Shift R, and off we go.